Hello and welcome everyone. This is a great opportunity to be here and share more knowledge about embedded electronics. Thanks for being here and let's get started. The most important rule when writing software is that if it wasn't tested, then it doesn't work. This is the rule that you should live by. In this video, I will handle the following three points. What are the benefits of writing unit tests for your C code? How do you know what tests to write and how do you know when you are done? How do we actually write unit tests for a C application? You will be amazed at how many bugs you will find the moment you start writing unit tests for your code. It is humanly impossible to both write and maintain code over time while at the same time guaranteeing correct functional behavior to the end client over the long term without using some form of automatic testing. Whenever you need to change something in your code, it is crucial to have the unit tests in place. Because after you've made your small change, no matter how small the change is, you can no longer be sure that everything else works as it should. The only way to guarantee that everything else is working is by using automatic unit testing. Your change can be something as simple as temporarily committing out a call to an external function in order to test something else in the application and then simply forgetting to remove the comment that you have put there. Now imagine if this code only runs in response to a command and only fails when the command is being run. This can cause some serious problems. Every single unit test that you write gives you an increased sense of confidence in the code that you have delivered because you know that no matter what changes you make to the code over time, you can always guarantee consistency of behavior. So how do we know what to test and more importantly, how do we know what we haven't tested yet? The answer is to use code coverage. Code coverage is a set of reports which you can generate while your program is running by enabling this feature in both the compiler and the linker when you build your source code. The compiler will then place extra instructions in the program, which will enable generation of detailed reports of what parts of the program are being run. You will also see how many times each line of code is being executed. You should never have code coverage enabled in production application. You should only enable it when you compile your application for testing. Depending on the build configuration and exact commands uh, that you use for building your code, the way to enable code coverage will differ. But the end result is always the same. You will get a de detailed report of what lines of code that are being executed and what code has not been tested. So before you start writing your unit tests, you should always make sure that you can obtain complete code coverage report for the whole code base. If you don't do this, then you will quickly lose track of your progress and you will become discouraged. So how do we write the unit tests? To write the unit tests, you should typically use a framework which provides helper functions that allow you to have an easy way of placing constraints on the behavior of your program. I personally use Google Test, which is also known as GTest. I like this framework a lot because it is very clean, very complete, and it is very easy to use. It is also written in C++, making it suitable for both testing C code and for testing C++ code as well, which is a benefit. When you use gtest or any other C++ library on top of your C code, make sure that you place all of your include files which describe the C application into an extern C section in your C++ file so that they retain their C naming convention when you link your C++ code to the compiled C code. If you don't do this, then you will likely encounter unresolved simple errors when you link your unit tests. When I write and define the tests themselves, I typically try to build the test application from the test source file and the C source file being tested without including any other parts of the code base. This is a good practice because it forces you to write mock methods for any outbound calls made by your C code and um, this allows you to write unit tests for um, invalid data being returned by the external API calls. And basically, you're testing how well your current source file can handle such cases. Of course, when you do it this way, you'll very often be reminded of how important it is to write object-oriented C code that does not access any global variables. 
because to the degree that you access global variables, your job when testing the code will become exponentially more difficult. It is very easy to test a method call that, for example, retrieves some value from somewhere else than it is to test some code that directly reads external memory location. So always use object-oriented principles, which I discussed previously in this series, and you will make your life much easier when writing C code. You know that you have done a good job testing your code base when you have exhausted all the possibilities that you can think of when it comes to finding ways to break your code and when you have achieved 100% code coverage. If you like this video, then subscribe to my channel and share this video with everybody you know.